Okay, the group of questions that we're going to look at now um, are problems which create quadratic equations. Um, so what we're aiming for is to get um, that particular equation out of the problem that they're giving you in context. Now, in order to do that, there are a number of stages you're going to have to go to. It's not going to be possible for you to go from there just to writing that down. So let's take a look at the context of this first one. <coughs> In the di diagram, ABC is a straight line and BCDE is a rectangle. The side DC is of length x centimeters, uh, BC is of length x plus 4 centimeters, and AB is of length 2 x centimeters. The area of the whole shape is 48 centimeters squared. Giving full details of all your working, show clearly that x satisfies that quadratic equation. All right, so we're talking about area, and it's telling us that the area of that whole shape is 48 centimeters squared. Now, in order to work out what the area of that shape is, I need to divide it into this triangle, which I can get an expression for area. I can work out the area of that rectangle, because I know in terms of x, its length and its width. So by adding those two together, I'm then able to put it equal to um, 48 because I know that the total area is 48. So first of all then let's work with the area of the rectangle. Well I know that the area of a rectangle is length times width so in this case that's going to be x plus 4 times x. Now it's really important that you use brackets here to show that this length BC is that separated from that times X. Without those brackets, the only thing that was going to be multiplied by that bracket, uh, by that X, was the 4. So we've got X plus 4, which we're multiplying by X. When you're multiplying our brackets, whether you write it like that or with the X in front, each term inside the bracket has to be multiplied by each term outside. So we're going to do x times x to give us x squared, and x times 4 to give us plus 4x. Now we work with the area of the triangle. And we know the area of a triangle is half times the base length, which in this case is 2x, times the height, which in this case is x. Make sure you can distinguish between your multiply and your x. So half of 2x is x, so what we have there is x times x, which is x squared. Now, we know that the total area will be the area of the triangle plus area of rectangle, which in our case is x squared plus x squared plus 4x. And we know that that's equal to 48 because it's telling us that the total area equals 48. Right, so if we look now at what we're trying to get, we're trying to get x squared plus 2x take 24 equals 0. So what we've got here is you've got an x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared, plus 4x. Now in order to make it equal 0, I need to get rid of that 48 from the right-hand side. It's a plus 48, so in order to get rid of it, I'm going to subtract 48. If I subtract 48 from that side, I have to do the same from the other side. So if you now look at where we're aiming for and what we've got, Basically, what we've got is two times what we're aiming for. We got two there, we got four there, where we want two, we got 48 there, where we want 24. So what we can now do is divide that whole equation by two, giving us x squared plus 2x minus 24 equals zero, which is what we were aiming for. Now, the beauty with these questions is even if you can't get the equation that they want you to get, 
<coughs> you're still able to carry on and do the rest of the question because they give you what the answer to part A would have been. So even if you can't do part A, or you've tried it and you can't get it right, you should still be able to go on as long as you know how to solve a quadratic equation and find the length of DC. Now, with this particular question, there's no need to use the quadratic formally. The clue there is if the question said, giving your answer correct to one decimal place or two decimal places, you would need to use the formula. This one just factorizes. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give 24 and combine to give 2. Okay, don't worry so much about the signs yet. So factor pairs of 24 would be 24 and 1. No way could you make those add or subtract in any shape or form to give yourself 2. Um, 12 and 2, similarly you could get 14 out of it, you could get 10 out of it, but you aren't going to get 2 out of it. Um, and 6 and 4. Now 6 and 4 multiply to give 24, and they had to give 10, uh, but if the signs are different, then you could combine those to get plus 2. So 6 and 4 are going to be the um, numbers that we're working with. Now we just need to get the signs right. <coughs> so in order to make plus 2, the 6 is going to have to be positive, and the 4 is going to have to be negative, because plus 6, take away 4, is plus 2. And you can just check that just to make sure you're right by expanding out the brackets. x times x gives us x squared. x times minus 4 is minus 4x. Plus 6x is 2x. And then plus 6 times negative 4 is minus 24. So I know I'm right. I'm well on the way. Once you get to that point, you then break it up to say, well, either that particular combination equals zero and if that's equal to zero when you solve that you get x equals take the plus six uh, make it zero by subtracting six subtracting six from that side gives you that or x minus four this bracket must equal zero which gives you x as four now you can't have two values, only one of those values can be right. And because the context of this question is length, you can't have a negative length. So this isn't the value that I'm working with. So x equals 4. Now, I still haven't answered the full question. Yes, I have, sorry, because the question is asking for DC, and DC equals X. So X equals 4 equals DC. Job done. Okay, similar sort of context with this question. diagram shows a trapezium. Um, the parallel sides of the trapezium are the lengths 10 centimeters and 2x minus 3 centimeters. The height of the trapezium is 4x plus 6 and we know that in fact its area is 70 square centimeters. Now if you can't remember the formula for the area of the trapezium you are given it uh, on the front page of your exam paper. It's this one here. The area is half bracket a plus b which are the two parallel sides h so that means it's half of the sum of its parallel sides multiplied by the distance between them so putting that information here I know that the area equals a half 10 plus that times the height and the height is 4x plus 6. I just missed out the x there. 4x plus 6. And I know that that total area comes to 70. So just go through that again. The formula for the area of a trapezium is half um, bracket, the two parallel sides added together, times 
height, the perpendicular distance between them. <coughs> so a half that side plus that side times that side. And I know that that equals 70. All right, let's do a bit of tidying up work here. If I multiply by 2, first of all, to get rid of that half, because a half times 2 is 1, I have to multiply that by 2 as well. So if I multiply by 2, I get left on this side. Um, inside the bracket there, I've got a 10 and a take 3, which is 7. So that I can write as 2x plus 7. This I can write as 4x plus 6. And on this side, I've got 140, because I've got to times both sides by 2. Okay, so the two, the 10 take away the 3 is 7, so I've written that as 2x add 7. Then I haven't done anything with that uh, other than written, written it like that. Now, what I'm aiming for is 4x squared plus 20x take 49 equals 0. So there aren't any brackets. So now I've got to expand out these brackets. Now, when you expand out the brackets, what you're doing is you're multiplying each term in the first bracket by each term in the second bracket. So first of all, I'm going to do 2x times 4x, which is 8x squared. x times x is x squared. Then I'm going to take the 2x and multiply it by that bracket. So 2x times plus 6 is plus 12x. So that's the first bit done. That 2x has now been multiplied by everyone. So now I'm going to take the plus 7 and do plus 7 times 4x is plus 28x and then 7 times 6 both positive so that's plus 7 6 is 42 and that's equal to 0 which means I need to get rid of the 140 over that side which means I'm going to subtract 140 off both sides Right, let's do some tidying up. So I've got 8x squared. There's no other x squared term. So that's just written down as 8x squared. Then I've got um, 28 and 12 is 40x. And then I've got 42, take away 140, which is uh, 98, isn't it? Minus 98 equals 0 look at what I've got, look at what I'm aiming for, and I can see here that if I divide that all by 2, I'm going to end up with what I, what I was looking for. So divide by 2, and I get 4x squared plus 20x minus 49, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So that's what I'm aiming for. As I said in the previous question, spend some try and play around with that but if you can't get it out and you do know how to use the quadratic formula then more than half the marks are still available to you just using the answer that they've given you now the quadratic formula is also given you on the front um, formula sheet which is here so it's saying that if your quadratic equation is of the form ax squared where a is a number plus bx plus c, where b and c are also numbers equal 0, then in order to work out what x is, you put them into this formula here. So let's um, take a look at what we've got then. So we've got a is 4, b is 20, and c is negative 49. We have to make sure that that sign comes with us. So putting that into our formula, x is going to be minus, and then instead of b, I'm going to write 20, plus or minus the square root of b squared, 20 squared, minus 4ac, 4, and then bracket a, which is 4, and then bracket c, which is negative 49 all over 2 bracket and a is 4. <coughs> so that's plugging everything into my formula. Now let's tidy that up a little bit. Um, 
minus the number in there is positive so negative times a positive is a negative minus 20 plus or minus the square root right let's work out what on earth this all comes to underneath the, the square root here we have 20 squared take open bracket 4 sorry take 4 open bracket 4 open bracket now that there is the negative the minus sign not a subtract so we use this button here 49 close bracket so I've written on my calculator exactly what is underneath that square root sign and when I press equals that works out to be 1184 and underneath there 2 times 4 is 8 now for any quadratic equation you're going to get two solutions which is why you have this strange idea here of a plus or minus it means that either x is minus 20 plus the square root of 1184 divided by 8 or x is negative 20 take away 1184 over 8. So that's how we generate how our two solutions. And again, we can put this onto our calculator exactly as we see it there. So it's a fraction, it's one on top of the other. So let's set it up as a fraction. Then it's negative 20, so it's that minus sign 20. Take away the square root of 1184, sorry, plus for the top one, plus the square root of 1184, all divided by 8. So what we've got there looks exactly the same as what you put in your calculator. And remember that that's for the negative 20 using this button here, not the subtract button. Press equals and press SD to turn it into a decimal and that is 1.8 and they want the answer to one decimal place so it's 1.8 then we do the same for this bottom one so this time now fraction button negative 20 subtract the square root of 1184 over 8 and work out what that is and work out what that is and you can see there it's minus 6.8 hello now we've got two answers one is positive one is negative Again, in the context of this question, it's, it's lengths of sides, so we can't have a negative answer. So, can't be that one, must be that one. So in order to work out the height, our height, so x is 1.8, our height is 4x plus 6. So height will be 4, 1.8, plus 6. So that means 4 times 1.8 or just put it in your calculator as we've got it there and the calculator will know that that's what you mean. 13.2 centimeters. So again even if you can't make any headway in part A but you can just learn how to plug things into this quadratic formula and how to make it work with your calculator, then four out of the seven marks are still available to you in that question. Okay, another similar question again. This time we're working with volume. So, We've got the area of cross-section of a prism, which is 3x squared, and the length of the prism is x plus 7. The volume, they're telling us, 
is this additional expression 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1. That's what we're aiming for. Now, on the front of your exam book, it tells you this about the volume of a prism. It's the area of a cross section times the length. So the volume of this will be 3x squared, which is the area of the cross section, times its length, which is x plus 7. And we know that that volume must equal this, which they're telling us in the question. 3x cubed plus 2x plus 1. And I will show that is again a quadratic where it must equal 0. So we know that we have to take each of those off both sides just to let the z just let 0 be on its own on the right hand side. Let's deal with the bracket first of all. If I multiply 3x squared by x, I get 3x cubed. If I multiply 3x squared by 7, I get 7 3s are 21 x squared. Now that's good news because that's what I've got there. Now, in order to get rid of the 3, 3x cubed from that side, I have to subtract 3x cubed. And if I do it to that side, I have to do it to this side as well. So that's got rid of that. To get rid of the plus 2x, I've got to subtract 2x. If I subtract 2x from that side, I've got to do the same from this side. And similarly, to get rid of the plus 1, I've got to subtract 1. Subtract from there, I have to subtract from the left-hand side as well. So by subtracting those from both sides, I've just got 0 left on the right-hand side. So, let's see what happens when I tidy this up now. I've got a 3x cubed, take away a 3x cubed, so they cancel each other out. So they've gone, which is good news, because I haven't got any 3x cubed in my original, or what I'm aiming for. 21x squared, there aren't any more 21x squared, any more x squared terms. Similarly, I've got my take 2x, and similarly, I've got my take 1 equals 0, which is what I was aiming for. So that job is done. If you can't do it, just write it down. doesn't matter. You lose those two marks, but you'll see now where we're going um, with the formula. So with this one here, the ax squared means that a is 21, plus bx means that b is negative 2, and plus c means that c is negative 1. So when we put that now into our quadratic formula, what we've got is minus b, so minus, and the b is already negative, so you need to be very careful with your signs here. Okay, the minus is in the formula, so whatever b is, that minus is still there. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 1, all over 2 times a, which is 21. Okay, so use brackets, make sure that the signs are all going in the right place. The first minus there is part of the formula. That's going with whatever your value of b is, which in this question is negative. Plus or minus the square root of b, which is minus 2 squared. Take 4 times a, 21, times c, negative 1, all over that. Right, now we work out what we can. Well, negative, negative 2, minus times a minus makes a plus, so that becomes positive 2 outside, plus or minus the square root. Let's now evaluate what goes underneath the square root there. So again, exactly as I've written it, open bracket, negative 2, close bracket, squared, take, okay, that's a take away, 4 bracket, 21 bracket, negative 1 bracket, 
Okay, so um, doesn't fit on the screen unfortunately. Negative 2 squared take 4 bracket 21 bracket minus 1 or negative 1 equals 88. So what goes underneath that square root sign is 88 and underneath it is 2 times 21 which is 42. So now we deal with a plus or minus by breaking up that sum into either x equals 2 plus the square root of 88 over 42. So on the calculator let's make it look exactly like that. Fraction button. On top of the fraction we've got 2 add square root 88. On the bottom of the fraction 42 equals SD turn it into um, a decimal and here we want our answers correct to two decimal places so that's going to be 0 0.27 which is positive so it's quite possible that that's going to be our answer but let's do the orbit x equals 2 take square root of 88 over 42 Cancel that one. Fraction. Top top line. 2 take square root 88. Bottom line 42 equals SD. So here we've got negative 0 0.1 0 and then it's not 0 0.17 because the next one over is 5 or bigger which makes that 0 0.18 but it's going to be that one it's not going to be that one because you can't have negative length all right but you need to work both of those out okay because in a different context there's no reason why that one wouldn't be incorrect but because the context is length we decided the answer is going to be that one then it says to us hence evaluate the volume of the prism giving your answer correct to one decimal place. Well, the volume of the prism we know is this here. So instead of writing x in there, we're going to write 3 bracket 0 0.27 cubed plus 2 bracket 0 0.27 plus 1 because that's the expression that tells us what the volume is. And again, you can just put that exactly as we've written it onto your calculator. 3 bracket 0.27 close bracket. There's your cube button. Plus 2 bracket 0.27 plus 1 equals. And again, you want your answer now correct to one decimal place. So it's going to be one point. Well, it's not 5 because the next digit is 5 or more, so the answer is going to be 1.6. There you go. Okay, slightly different context this time, or very different context. The first x seconds of a journey, for the first x seconds of a journey, the average speed of a cyclist is 4 meters per second. For the next 5x plus 2 seconds, the average speed is x meters per second. The total distance travelled is 128 meters. Show that x satisfies this equation. So we know that we're working with the total distance here. It's going to equal 128. So in order to create an equation which is blah 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 equals 128, I need distance travelled in the first part of the journey and distance travelled in the second part of the journey and add them together. Okay, um, you should know that speed is distance over time. You're not given that, but you should know it um, from your maths lessons or even from science. So if we want distance, S and T are on the same line, so it's a times. So the distance is going to be the speed times the time.
So in the first part of the journey, which took x seconds, there's my time, there's my speed. So distance in the first part of the journey, journey will be x times 4, or 4 speed 4 times x, which you just write as 4x. In the second part of the journey, the speed is x and the time is 5x plus 2. So if we get rid of that bracket, x times 5x is 5x squared, x times 2 is plus 2x. So the total distance will be those two distances added together. So you're going to have the 4x in the first part of the journey, plus 5x squared, plus 2x, second part of the journey. And we know that when those are added together, it's going to come to 128 metres. Right, it's a quadratic, I need to make it equal to zero. I have to have just a zero on the right hand side, so I'm going to have to subtract 128 off both sides. On top of that, there are no other x squared terms, so it's 5x squared. Then I've got a 4x and a 2x making 6x, and I'm subtracting 128 off both sides, and that gives me the equation I was looking for. Three marks for that. If you can't get it, it doesn't matter. You can still go straight on to part B. Telling you it's the formula. So you need A, which is the number in front of the in front of the x squared. B, which is the number in front of the x, which is plus six. And C, which is the term that hasn't got any x on it, which is negative one, two, eight. Plugging that into your formula, you're going to have x equals, get the formula there again for you, so it's minus or negative whatever the value of b is. In this case, the value of b is 6. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, take 4 bracket a bracket c. all over 2a, sorry a is 5. Right, let's solve all those brackets now then. So negative 6, sorry negative times b, b is positive, signs are different, the answer is negative. So that's negative 6 plus or minus the square root. Here we go, let's sort out underneath that square root sign, so we're going to have open bracket 6 close bracket squared, take 4 bracket 5 bracket negative 1, 2, 8 close bracket equals 2, 5, 9, 6 and underneath 2 bracket 5, 2 times 5, 10. Now we split it up, either x is negative 6 plus all that and here we want our answer to one decimal place let's make the calculate the screen look the same as that fraction top of the fraction negative 6 plus square root 2596 underneath 10 equals change it to a decimal. One decimal place, 4.5 because the next one is 5 or above. Or x is negative 6 take away 2596 all over 10. Cancel that, set up the fraction, negative 6 take away square root 2596 underneath 10. Does it look the same? Yes it does. Equals, changes to a decimal, 
negative 5.7 so those are my solutions two solutions correct to one decimal place hence find the total time for the journey well time can't be negative either so that is right can't have negative time okay so that's the value that I'm going to use so the total time for the journey is x for the first bit plus 5x plus 2 for the second bit so I know now that x is 4.5 so adding those together and again you can just type that into your calculator exactly as I've written it there 4.5 plus open bracket 5 open bracket 4.5 close bracket add to close bracket equals 29 seconds now we've got one more to do in this bundle uh, and again this one is to do with speed okay so let's get our distance speed time triangle going to start with and it's the same as the previous one x seconds of the journey has got a speed of three then the next bit of the journey the average speed is that and they're giving us the total distance so it's exactly the same setup as the previous question uh, distance in first part will be speed times time I got that I got that the wrong way around didn't I? that should be speed is distance over time that's the problem with your triangles you've got to make sure that you remember which way they work so um, distance is speed times time so that's going to be 3 times x which is 3x distance in second part will be um, 3x plus 2 times 7x make sure you see that x there so speed is 7x times 3x plus 2 when you multiply that out everything outside by each term separately inside so you get 7x times 3x 21 and 7 threes x times x is x squared and then the second part 7x times plus 2 is plus 14x so the total distance would be the distance traveled in the first bit 3x plus the distance traveled in the second bit 21x squared plus 14x and we know that that total distance must equal 250 my quadratic equation equals naught so I got to subtract 250 off each side and I've also got some tidying up to do here only got one x squared term which is 21 x squared good because that's what I'm aiming for I get a 3x add 14x which is 17x good that's what I'm aiming for and I'm going to take 250 off each side to make that zero bingo that's exactly what we were looking for so that's those three marks sorted now we're into our formula a is 21 b is plus 17 c is negative 250 into the formula x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared take 4a 
C and C is negative 250. I missed that out there. Okay, make sure you spot, pick up that that negative needs to come with it. So it's negative 250 all over 2 times A, which is 21. Tidy that up as best we can. Negative times positive, negative 17. Plus or minus the square root. What have we got under there? Bracket 17 close bracket squared. Take 4 bracket 21 bracket open bracket negative 250 close bracket equals 21289 all over 2 times 21, 42. We can't simplify that any further now. We've got to split up the plus minus bit. So we say either x is negative 17 plus to the square root of 2, 1, 2, 8, 9, all divided by 42. Fraction, top line, negative 17 plus square root 2, 1, 2, 8, 9, underneath 42 equals. And we want two decimal places, 3.06 is the second decimal place, but the digit after is bigger than 5, so it rounds to 7. 3.07. Or, x is negative 17, take away the square root of 2, 1, 2, 8, 9, over 42. negative 17 take away square root 21289 all over 42 negative 3.88 to two decimal places x is time can't be negative it must be the first one that we worked out time can't be negative. So the total time for the journey is x plus 3x plus 2. x in the first bit, 3x plus 2 in the second bit. We know that x is 3.07 plus 3 back it 3.07 plus 2 put that into your calculator exactly as you see it 3.07 plus 3 open bracket 3.07 close bracket plus 2 equals 14.28 seconds so the crucial thing with these questions is if you can't do part A, you should just be able to practice and practice how to put these into uh, the formula to get these three marks. Uh, and maybe, you know, if you pressed for time in the exam, do this bit first, and then if you've got some time left at the end, go back and play around to see if you can get that quadratic equation. But these always carry lots of marks. You can see there that's eight marks for that question. So it's really worth practicing these.